Hello friends, welcome to the Quarantine Zone. Tonight is a double QZ, um, which means I have not one, but two awesome musicians joining me. Um, they are Miss Charlie Pine over here on my, Hello. right on my screen, I think <laughs> for people, and Mr. Daniel Smithson over here. How's it going, Daniel? Yeah, I'm all good, I'm all good. Wicked. Yeah, thank you very much for tuning in, folks. Um, we do like it when you ask us questions and just tell us what you think. So please do send any, you know, questions or comments for Charlie or Daniel. And um, yeah, all right, let, let's do it. So we've got two really nice videos that we worked on. We worked hard on um, to show people. But before we do, um, how, like, how the hell are you finding things as they open up? Daniel, let, let's start with you, man. How are things going for you, Maddie? You, you're doing like so many gigs, recording <laughs> sessions and stuff. What's um, what's going on in your life? It's it's always funny when um, it's like I can tell that you've already done some digging on there by um your response. But it's just <laughs> it's interesting where um, like fourteen months or however long you want to call it, um, still got things done. Um, like it was good that I was teaching and still getting paid from teaching work in schools. But now that things like lockdown is easy, it's just like everything is just flooded in. It's like a big dramatic change from like having little bits and bobs on and to say no to stuff. And, and I can't say yes to everything because just passing on work to other drummers. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting shift. That's great, man. And that's so good that you're in that you know, in the position to be able to do that. Um, Daniel, I remember like, so let me tell the story of how we came to be working <laughs> on this. Story. Uh, do you remember where we met, Daniel? Is it probably Roddy's? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think basically there was a time, everyone, when I, like whatever gig I was watching, you know, the, the band would finish and then you'd like leave the venue and I'd be hanging outside and Daniel would always be there. And I was like, wow, okay, this guy, he's keen and he likes a lot of the same stuff I like. So when it came to doing a collab, it was, you know, Daniel, you're, a, you're an obvious choice, you know. Um, and then, Daniel, you were like, you were like, oh, if, you've, if you need a bass player, I've got a great bass player. And I was like, who? And you're like, Charlie Pine, trust me, she's great. And so, yeah, and, and, and to, enter Charlie, nice to meet you. And thank you for, uh, you know, Hi. Um, yeah, you know, rising <laughs> to the occasion. And um, how have you been, Charlie? You've been extremely productive uh, I, over lockdown. I have. I have. I moved house uh, and then I had a baby. So <laughs> he's now two months old and uh, I recorded everything uh, when I was six months pregnant, I think. Seven, possibly. Um, yeah. So that's playing double bass uh, with a big bump is quite an experience because no, nothing works properly. You have to completely change your posture. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is the bass just like really far away from you, basically? Yeah. I just I had to stand it a lot more upright for the fingerboard to be in the same places. It was doable, yeah. but I'm I'm quite glad that I'm kind of returning to a normal shape again. That's <laughs> really weird. Everyone, you're going to see weird. this. You're going to see this in the video. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if anyone's curious. Um, yeah. <laughs> great. And, um, yeah, so, Charlie, I was doing some research on you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this, this album, which I listened to for the first time recently. Oh, yeah. and I And I really liked. Good good work. Who's in the band? And um, Thank you very yeah, much. Tell me, tell me about, the, about the cover and the title. They're really intriguing. So uh, the band is uh, me on bass and singing a bit. Um, my husband, Luke Pinkstone, on saxophones, uh, Katie Patterson on drums, and Liam Dunnicky on piano. Ah, okay. Yeah. Great. No wonder it sounds, and, uh, sounds good. Um, <laughs> they're all awesome. Yeah. Charlie, I was trying to imagine what would happen if I did a gig with my other half, my wife, and, like, <laughs> let's say she, I don't know, like played something wrong. And then I was like, oh, my love, you actually played that. <laughs> it's an F sharp, not an F. And then I can imagine it just erupting into a massive domestic 
Uh, like, has that ever happened on one of your gigs where you've been like, Luke, you, I told you only to play two choruses. You keep playing five <laughs> choruses. And, and then you get have a massive argument and throw your bass at him. Has that ever happened? We d we no we don't we don't really argue, um, and we keep we sort of joke about it. We think we should sort of book one in, an argument. No, we uh, no, he's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, wow, it's very it's very calm. That's great. Yeah, no, he's oh good. God. He's a he's a good kind of cheerleader as well. He sorts me out when I get nervous or stressed about stuff. He's oh, good. He, yeah. He's not oh. even in the room anymore either. He's gone. And yeah. <laughs> no, no, he's good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're not just saying that because he's there watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Awesome. But no, the, the, the whole band are awesome. Uh, Katie Patterson is the drummer who I book for everything. Um, she's very she's great. versatile. She's and great. She told me about you. Um, huge skills. Way back, yeah. Um, and Liam, Liam Dunnicky is just, oh, he's a genius. This is, one of these scary people that can, yeah, he does things to chords that I don't understand. So I, that, I, I try not. Want. That's what you want pianists <laughs> yeah. to do, right? Yeah, I try not to spell anything too precisely unless I have a really, really definite plan about it because I know that he'll do something amazing. So I just leave him to it. Yeah. Which is a treat. Yeah, totally. It's good. Check, check it out, folks. Dancing Shadows. It is nice, I can assure yeah. you. And um, you. yeah, great. We're going to talk a little bit more about what uh, what Charlie's been up to, and we're going to meet Daniel uh, in a bit. But why don't we go to the first video? I, I can't remember Daniel if you suggested this or if I did, because there were lots. Is this of the chill, chill one? It's chill, yeah. Yeah, you suggested it, but it was of that album that I really like. Of yeah, Russian. yeah. It's great. We had some like when I was like Daniel, do you want to do a collab? He, he sent through like a Bob Marley tune. A, a George Benson tune, a Harvey Mason tune, and a Kenny Kirkland tune, which is what we actually chose in the end. So that's our second piece. But okay, yeah, this one's this one is my <laughs> suggestion. Uh, really hope you like it, folks. Beautiful playing from from Daniel and Charlie. Um, this is from the Mood Swings album, featuring Brian Blade on drums, Christian McBride on bass, Brad Meldow on piano, and Joshua Redman. Amazing. I tagged him on Instagram. Did you see that? So maybe he'll uh, <laughs> watch something. He probably won't. He's probably Never know. But anyway, he yeah, so, yeah, this is chill. I uh, hope you like it, folks.
Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely playing. Um, yeah, Charlie, that was such a nice surprise when, um, when you started singing. Because uh, when I got the stem back, I didn't know, I didn't know that you were going to do that. And I was like, oh, great. I wish I could do that. It, it would render my audio unusable if I had done that. <laughs> but yeah. Thank you. And uh, yeah, very swinging, Daniel. Keeping Thanks for that. clear time throughout. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> trying, trying to do a thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely, man. Lovely. Um, That's a fun tune. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, so yeah. nice. Really like, nice. I used to listen to it like, I don't know, maybe like 15, 16 years ago. And some tunes, are, you know, when I listen now to things that I used to listen to that long ago, sometimes I'm like, okay, this is not, I don't like it. This sucks. <laughs> but but with, with that entire record, I'm like, wow, this is still amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah. Daniel, 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 you busy boy. Let's hear a little bit <laughs> about what you've got going on. So, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just a regular human being. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you're getting so much done. Hey, Charlie, look. Hey, Tom, thank you for tuning in, man. Um, and yeah. Jason Wade commented as well. Thank Jason. Is it Jason Wade? Yeah, yeah, nice. Oh, thanks for checking out, Jason. Guys, I don't know if, can you see that? Am I moving the comment yeah. around? Yes, oh, yes, 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 yeah, we can see it clearly, yeah. I need to not Thanks, do that. Thanks, Tom. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Daniel, when we were, we were just talking in the last couple of days and you were doing some work with these fine people, tell me about this band. What's going on here? Yeah, What's this well, group? Yeah, the Dilemma Collective. And um, it was actually Eddie Hick. Do you all know Eddie Hick from Sons of Comet? And he's playing with Ashley Henry. Play with everybody. He recommended me for um, Dilemma Collective. I was um, kind of replacing Benjamin Appiah. He's doing a lot of stuff with Steam down now. And I think he was at the time doing stuff with Triforce. So yeah, um, um, came and did an audition with them. Fine enough, I didn't even know that it was an audition, but I came and they were impressed that, that I came early. They were impressed that. I bought my charts, which I was taught about at worship. So, so I, like, I just wrote, I, I tried out the songs myself mm. and they were happy that I did my homework. And um, they told me some other drummers who um, wanted to get the gig. And I was surprised that they didn't take, I was surprised at the drummers that they didn't take on, but like they were very particular on who they wanted. Yeah. And um, yeah, like they're a, a good group. Like Dilemma always pushes us to like, be early to know the song she always wants to get the best out of us and yeah it's different work with a spoken word artist because typically we work say instrumental or um singers but a spoken word artist is a different different mm. mindset to work with that so yeah cool All good and you were recording with them the other day you recorded a couple of tracks right yeah they're doing um four single releases and they're they're being mixed and mastered the tracks so we'll hear how the mixing and mastering goes and probably i don't know a month's time two months time you guys know how long mixing and mastering takes so mm. we'll see 
Yeah, it could take a while. All right, let's get on to the next cool thing that Daniel's been doing. <laughs> Annette well, Walker. Been <laughs> so <laughs> I think this is, that's Annette Walker. And I think, uh, I think this is a thing that's coming up as, a, as opposed to a thing that's been, although maybe you've performed with her in the past. Um, she's a tap dancer, is that right? Tell us a little bit yes, about that. Yes, definitely. Yeah, see, I met her at South by, no, no, I actually didn't. It's actually through my master's band actually my masters is a really good bass player um he's mainly does like fusion type of stuff and she um yeah she's the was the keyboard player of the band and then later down the line realized that she knows gary cosby as well so um we um do a lot of stuff together with a band called the residents and yeah she's got um a headliner at i believe it is festival thing coming up so I'm awaiting the further details for it. So that's something that's coming up and the rehearsal will come for that soon. But yeah, um, I do a lot of stuff with her with the residents and with my master's band. Awesome. Um, the first time I ever heard a tap dancer in a jazz context I, was I think in, in Smalls in, in New York where there's okay, a jam session. Smalls, yeah. yeah, and then, you know, I'd never heard that before where like a tap dancer will trade with with a band, but it was amazing, like trading eights, you know, on the rhythm changes and stuff. It was really cool. Um, yeah, there's a there's a tap jam on, and I'm trying my best to remember the the female drummer that puts it on, and I'm just it's Michelle Drees. Yes, he's Charlie knows her stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Michelle's great. Yeah, yeah, I've been to some of the tap jams as well, and it's interesting, like talking to the band members when I've been how they approach working with tap dancers so mm. yeah awesome next what about what about this <laughs> oh this is um nsf um obviously because of the pandemic it wasn't on so they put an event which is an alternative to the carnival so yeah. i first um did their event in 2019 so my sister actually um put me in touch with them so i'm responsible for providing the band which is a different ball game. I guess you guys feel it when you're when you're doing an album or when you're the band leader. But it's like being responsible. It's just a different headspace. Everybody's asking me questions, and I've <laughs> got to provide the answers and be super organised and I know, all like, that stuff. A different headspace. Yeah, well, you know when people like ask you the day before like what time you have to get to the gig i'm like i don't know it's the day before <laughs> like you forget that people do actually have lives and you know they need yeah. this information so I, I think i'm quite bad for that so if anyone in my band is watching i apologize but yeah it's hard it's hard uh, juggling all the information isn't it um yeah so that's like afrobeat music mixed with funk soul stuff and um yeah, when I went there, they had a Carla there. I don't know if you know a Carla. He's a dynamite yeah. brother. And then the year before, they had a famous Arsenal footballer there. Um, they started in 2000, in 2012. Yeah, so but like, never mind them, man. Of, they got Daniel <laughs> Smith's in there, man. That's who they got there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they, have, they, they have little old me. They have little old me there now. <laughs> hey, um, sorry, Charlie. Go ahead. Were you going to say something? No, no, it's good. I think it's too too modest. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Future drum legend, Daniel. Man. Hey, all right. Last one, Daniel. This I really like this picture, and I know why you're smiling so much. Wait, wait. Oh, Ralph Peterson. Yes, yes. Ralph Peterson. He sadly passed away, but like he's always. That was at the UK drum show in nice. Manchester in 2019. And yeah, like, I've always followed him. Like, always followed him. And he's got some interesting videos on YouTube. Like, I really delved the... Well, I'm still learning. But I really delved the up-tempo jazz thing on the ride through watching this video. He really explained it properly. Mm. He talked about... Stepping for Art Blake in the Jazz Messengers, where he had to learn all the tunes, could sing mm -hmm. all the melodies, like know, know the structure inside out. Um, he's And yeah, he's always fun when he does like a, a workshop. And obviously he taught at Berkeley, but he's playing like every time I hear him, there's just something 
um, interesting to hear from him, and he's and he's taught Troy Miller as well. He's and yeah, he's another he's, drummer that I look up to. So yeah, yeah, he's really, really highly regarded in the drum community, and you could be forgiven maybe for thinking that he's mainly mainly like a, a, a kind of influential character, but he's actually so so prolific. Um, I was listening to like the Art of War today actually i've got a little clip he does this little thing on the hi-hat which is so sick i've never heard anyone else do but um so he's played he's performed with and like in recordings with bramford marsalis roy hargrove charles lloyd melissa aldana um let me look and remind myself delfio <laughs> marsalis uh, tom harold jeremy pelt like just so many people and and so many albums as a leader as well but yeah, check, yeah. check out this little fill on the hi-hat here Wow. <laughs> did, did you hear that? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'd never heard anyone do that before. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, um, he's, he's a true legend. True legend. He is a true legend. So that's great that you got to meet him, man. Um, and that shirt that he is wearing is unbelievable. I would love a shirt like that. I don't know if I can yeah. pull it off. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, rest in peace, uh, Rapidson. Um, yeah. Um, Charlie, what you got coming up? You've got, you got some very cool things coming up. You were telling me you've been doing some recording and a couple of live yes. things at the Pheasantry and so on. Uh, anything you're yes. looking forward to especially? So, uh, I, I just didn't tell you everything. No. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, next Saturday, I'm playing at Leeds Castle. Yeah. Um, with a band called Down for the Count, and they're a swing band. And we've actually done a bunch of stuff uh, over lockdown. We got a couple of rounds of Arts Council funding, which has been amazing. Amazing. Um, and they helped us to put on uh, two two shows in one day at Cadogan Hall in June, which is brilliant, as my last thing pre-baby as well, so it's good. Um, but we're playing at Leeds Castle next next Saturday, um, supporting the Royal Phil. Wow. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. So it's, it's us and then them, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm also playing soon at the Pheasantry with Katie Bertil, who's oh, a yes. brilliant singer. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so Katie, she's just got this fantastic voice. She's so in control. Um, does all the kind of flying around Ella Fitzgerald kind of stuff. Um, wow. Absolutely beautiful. Cool. Uh, she she made an EP called Something's Coming um, at the beginning of last year. Um, and she does kind of jazz, jazz arrangements with show tunes mainly, but it's beautiful. I'm also playing at the Pheasantry uh, as part of the London Jazz Festival with Philomena Campus, who's a Sardinian singer. Um, and she's fantastic. I, I don't know if it's going to be the same lineup as the last time I did that band, but before it was, um, I think it was Rod Young's on drums and yes, uh, Roland Young. Sutherland was, yeah, Roland Sutherland was on flute. Um, I'm going to get it wrong if I try and name everyone else in the band. It was, a, it was an awesome, awesome gig. Yeah. Um, the other cool thing that's happened recently is I recorded um, the bass parts for the music for Paradise, which is the new K Tempest show at the National Theatre. Wicked. Um, which I really want to go and see. I think it closes on the 11th of September, so um, I've got to get my skates on and get a ticket. But it's really like heavy dark music there's lots of chords on the bass guitar it's kind of it's quite nice. scary to play ah uh, yeah so you play electric <laughs> as well as acoustic yeah. obviously yeah oh electric yeah. Did it do that? yeah yeah nice. and that was um that was that was my first thing baby was five weeks old and i got the phone call and i was like yeah i can do that <laughs> It's nice. Yeah, you did it. Um, when I was initially talking to uh, to Charlie about about doing this, um, it was like, oh, I think you, I think Charlie, you were saying like, 
what what kind of time scale do you have in mind? And I was like, I don't know, whatever. And you were like, well, well, no, I'm going to have a kid, so I, I need to think about it a little bit. Um, and it worked out great. So I think, um, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you you did you did really well um, to to get it done. So. Um, That's great. And I saw you've been in um, Abbey Road recently recording as well. Always yes. a pleasure to be there. That was for the Disney film Cruella. Amazing. Um, mm. And actually, the, that's the reason I got this National Theatre thing, because John Paracelli was on both gigs. So, we love him. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's, there's one point in Cruella where the bass isn't Steve Pierce, who's on the rest of it. He's like the Don for session bass. Um, so there's one point in the film where it's my bass guitar. <laughs> That's the best bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wicked. But yeah, I'd love to do more of that. Um, and then I've got plans for another album. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got like half an album's worth of songs. Great. Um, and they're all kind of mainly quite personal stories. Are they like, I'm pregnant? I'm <laughs> pregnant. No. No, there's like, there's one about falling in love. Um, there's might be a couple about Excellent falling in love. Excellent topic. Yeah, there's one about uh, anxiety, being keeping up at night, worrying about things. Um, one that I wrote when all the Me Too stuff was happening, which is just basically a big big fat scream into the nothingness yeah. um, <laughs> you know, so but I'm, I'm hoping that Arthur is the baby it's called Arthur I'm hoping he's gonna inspire the rest of the album so and it'll be like a whole journey of the feminine whatever wicked yeah there's lo yeah. lots of different <laughs> kind of colors that you've just described yeah. there um, awesome I think yeah, it well. should tell quite a good kind of narrative arc is the yeah, wicked. Um, and then we'll tour it, but I'm just waiting until he's a little bit bigger so that I've actually got time <laughs> to sit at a piano and sort stuff out. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so, um, how how have you both found everything in the last like 18 months? Um, how how the hell have you stayed sane um, the whole time? And also, what have you been watching on Now TV or Netflix? I, by the way, I recently changed to Now TV, which has got some cool stuff on it. <laughs> but um yeah what 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 how how do you do it do you uh go on down first start with your day so how have i been coping over the 18 months yeah well I, as i mentioned it was still good that the schools were still paying me and i had more time to practice um drums and then there was like things like jamless so programs like jamless where you could jam online that I was doing with Move Your Hands, which used to be a night that happened on Wednesdays at Mama Bar, but Mama Bar got closed. Um, so there's stuff like that. Um, but also a lot of things happened on Zoom. So there was a chance to catch up with um, communities on Zoom. And um, yeah, but like, it's like now, yeah, lockdown's ease. So yeah, there's a there's there's some kind of normality coming back. And well, for what do I watch on TV? <laughs> now, I actually watch the rap game, but Power, those are shows that I watch. I'm trying to think of other things that I watch. But I honestly just watch DVDs, music DVDs and music stuff on YouTube and listen to podcasts and chats. But yeah. off the top of my head, yeah, Power, a little bit of Gotham, a little bit of scandal do you listen to yeah. the trap set at drummers podcast you know that one no i'll check it out first yeah. i've heard of that one yeah yeah check it out also um i'd hit that you know that one no these are all new new things so <laughs> i know i, I know, I know. <laughs> um wicked what about you charlie netflix recommend people people don't want music videos they want to know what you're watching <laughs> on tv yeah i uh, do you know what? i found it very difficult to listen to any music for a really long time when everything was shut I just couldn't do it um, I've, I've got back into watching some Tiny Desk concerts but mm. I saw the Alicia Keys Tiny Desk concert 
and I was sobbing for the whole thing. I just so I didn't I didn't watch much music. Um, we watched all of The Good Place. Okay, I like that which one. Which is it's super long, but it's kind of all worth it. <laughs> um, we rewatched Stranger Things. Great. Yeah. Um, I I've got a couple of guilty pleasures for when Luke's out because he hates them. Uh, but Buffy. <laughs> Buffy. I thought you were going to say okay. the the housewives of. <laughs> That's so Buffy popular. Buffy and uh, Lucifer, which is based on a Neil Gaiman um, graphic novel. Oh, and Good Omens came out during lockdown as well, and that's amazing. Okay. It's lovely, and that's, and that's based on a Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett book. Cool. Who are two of my favorite authors, so. I used to read a lot of Terry Pratchett. I should check that out. Good Omens is great. It's sort of loosely based on The Omen. Okay. Except the okay. Antichrist sort of gets lost <laughs> and grows up human. It's so like without any bad influences, it's, it's nice. Yeah. It's, it's really funny. Sounds cool. Sounds nicely silly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's you really mentioned silly. those things. It, it's reminding me. I did, I'm fine to think that I watched Suits over the hunt, over lockdown. Maybe I did, but Suits, I was actually watching it, honestly, to see how good Mecha Markle's acting was. <laughs> but then it was actually very addictive. It's actually an addictive program because you understand how lawyers operate and all that stuff. It actually <laughs> got very addictive. Yeah. So, yeah. I, th I think my wife, she might come in and tell me off now, but I think she was watching it for a bit and, and she just said, come over and look at this. And there was some sex scene with her in it. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, Suits. Um, recommendation, everyone. Mayor of East Town. That is awesome. Kate Winslet is really Mayor good of in that. East Town. Yeah, check it out. It's on Now TV. Okay. I don't know. There's no account for taste. Maybe people, some people won't like it, but really, really enjoyed that one. Um, Are you getting paid by Now TV? <laughs> sponsored, sponsored content. No, I am not. But but Now TV, if you do want to pay me, I do need money. Um, all right, folks, we're nearing the end. A couple of little final things. Fact of the day. What do we think about this? What do you think, Charlie? Oh, it sounds like too much responsibility. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Daniel? Um, if they're happy to do that, let them do that. <laughs> their choice. I mean, for me, this is assuming that the men actually have any money in the first place, which, you know, for <laughs> jazz people is, is not necessarily <laughs> true. Yeah. Who's Roma? Who are you, Roma? Thanks for watching anyway. And thank you everyone else for watching, by the way. Um, all right, so now I'm going to share a kid's a joke written by a kid that these don't always make sense, but I love them very much. So I'm going to share them. The risk of alienating everyone. Bring it on. Hi, Brian. Was it meant to be high brain or high brain? <laughs> I didn't think of that, Daniel, but that could be what it is. <laughs> hey, Brian. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> so there you go. Maybe it was hey, brain. I like, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that, Daniel. But yeah, none of those jokes make any sense, basically, these ones written by kids. So, all right, we're coming to the end. And we're going to play um, a nice fast swing piece called Mr. JC. Do you know who the JC is in question, Daniel? Is it Mr. Jesus Christ? Or is it I, John Coltrane? I, I, haven't, I don't know, you be, to be honest. Maybe you can tell me. I think it, well, it could also be a Scottish bass player, a friend of mine called Johnny Copeland. Uh, it could be mm -hmm. James Copus, trumpet player. Actually, no, it couldn't be because he wasn't born when Kenny wrote the tune. Anyway, <laughs> I, by the way, I asked Jason Ribello, who I believe knew Kenny Kirkland. I asked him if he had a story or anything about Kenny, but there, there weren't any. And actually, speaking of Jason, if anyone is around on Saturday, I'm going to be at the 606 with Tim Garland's band with Jason and Rod Youngs, who's been mentioned earlier, highly esteemed drummer. And I have not played with Rod before, so I'm very, very much looking forward to that after hearing. I mean, it's a bit scary, you know, when you hear so much about someone and you see them on clips and then you meet them and you're, you know, you get a bit nervous, but um, we're very much looking forward to that. Anyway, um, yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Smithson.
Everyone go and follow Daniel on Instagram. He's taken over the world from the drums. And uh, <laughs> Miss Charlie Pine, thank you so much for bringing you. your your spirit and, and musicianship to these, uh, these tunes. Um, and thank you, Jason. Really appreciate that, man. Thank you for tuning in. Let's, uh, let's close it out. This is Mr. JC. See you soon, guys. That's been fun. See you. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Cool, man. Cheers, Daniel. Peace. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.